So I'm really excited for today's topic. And today's topic is going to be all about arrested development. Now, if you're not already familiar with arrested development, arrested development is essentially this idea that the body grows up, but the mind does not. Now, it's not this overarching one size fits all theme. It's not like, okay, you are that way in all areas of life. In fact, it's very rarely anything like that. And instead, it's much more often that there are specific areas of life that we experience versions of arrested development, particularly in the way that we're coping. So essentially in our coping mechanisms or behaviors. Now, the actual sort of individual that I tend to see struggle by far the most with arrested development is the narcissist. So I want to really explore first what arrested development is and then really demonstrate to you how fitting this is for somebody with narcissistic personality disorder. So first things first, think of this idea of wherever we have some sort of trauma, it's very difficult to grow. Okay. We can't be in a state of coping and growing at the same time. They're, they're essentially more mutually exclusive things. It's one or the other. And so when we have this concept or idea that we go through a traumatic event, we tend to have some kind of way of coping with the traumatic event, but it provide it creates this sort of shell around ourselves where like this aspect of self with the shell around it, this coping part of ourselves doesn't get to evolve. So let's say for example, that as a child, you're in some sort of environment and it doesn't feel comfortable or safe. And your way with dealing with that tends to be that you decide, okay, you know what, I'm just going to, um, you know, go into this mode where I constantly seek attention as a way of trying to get my needs met for connection and thus safety. And so your way of dealing with, you know, let's say the trauma is related to, as well to feeling not good enough or insignificant or like you don't matter, you know, maybe you go into this constant attention seeking mode um, as a way of coping with that, right? To sort of fill that, that emptiness within you. And if that, if we don't have some capacity to like grow and actually solve for the underlying trauma, like the actual wound that's I'm not good enough, or I'm not important, or I don't matter, I'm unworthy, or those underlying wounds and unmet needs in a healthy way, then wherever, whatever age we were at that we developed that coping mechanism of being attention seeking in a very strong way, that will stay there, right? So if we were five years old when we developed that, then we will just continuing continue expressing essentially like the coping mechanisms of a five-year-old in that particular area. And so when we look at this idea, you know, when we go into that direct coping, here's the reason that when we're coping, we can't grow. And it's that when we are coping, we're in self-preservation mode. We're kind of in this survival mode, like just get the needs met, just run away from the, the wound or the problem by dealing with it in my external world and external environment. But personal and emotional growth involves us introspecting and going inward to our inner emotional environment and being able to first introspect and realize what's not working, then establish like an understanding of the root cause. Like, oh, I constantly seek attention because I really feel not good enough at a deep level and I'm trying to compensate for it. Or I have this unmet need of, of feeling like I'm worthy of connection and I haven't had healthy, stable connections in my life. So I have to, you know, get there. I have to actually build those relationships and reprogram any wounds I have around feeling unworthy. And then once we've done those first two steps, then we have to actually take some accountability to show up for that regularly and then rinse and repeat until it's our new normal, right? So when we are in automatic coping, we have these compulsive knee jerk emotional reactions to things as our coping mechanisms, like constantly attention seeking individuals, right? It's not like they're like, oh, I don't feel good. So I should go see if I can get attention from that person, or I should see if I can make myself big and grandiose and keep that person small so that I feel better about myself. So these are not conscious thoughts. These are subconscious coping mechanisms that are automatic. And again, the age at which we develop these is usually the age we are emotionally operating from when they are taking place in our adult lives. So when we look at this in regards to the narcissist, hopefully this will get really clear. Um, Think of how the narcissist can sometimes seem kind of childlike. And if we look a little bit more deeply, well, the first one is we see that narcissists really try to be grandiose, right? And they tend to really like constantly need attention 
and approval. And you know what I think of when I see dynamics like this is like the little child. Have you ever seen a little kid when they need attention? There's actually behavioral development stages where that's a huge important part of behavioral development is to get that attention, to get that connection, to get that approval. And when a child feels like that's empty and very missing, we can form a coping mechanism and then have arrested development take place where we still in our adult lives express those unmet needs from that space of what we felt like when we were a child. And when you see people in arrested development, they they not only internally report feeling childlike when they are doing those things, but actually their behavioral coping mechanisms tend to be kind of childlike. Now, I, this is not me saying, you know, and I'm going to go through a whole bunch here and it's not me saying that these are okay, right? It's not me saying, okay, just put up with them. If you have a narcissist in your life or you're dating one, like it's not me saying that this is a good person to be around. You obviously want to um, create really healthy boundaries and take a step back and away from relationships that are toxic or unhealthy. Um, but it's very useful to understand some of these things at the same time and how they can appear um, in different individuals. And so when you see, you've got the, the grandiosity, right? Which is very childlike. Um, you tend to have the manipulation, right? Where, where do we manipulate as individuals? We manipulate when we don't know how to communicate our needs and clearly articulate them. And so manipulation is a subconscious strategy to get a need met in a roundabout way. And children tend to struggle in early behavioral stages of development with manipulating. They tend to be a little bit manipulative at times, and that's normal for children. But as an adult, it can become dangerous, right? Because we're, we don't have childlike consequences for things. And so that's a huge tactic, right? Again, arrested development the vast majority of the time. Um, and the other interesting thing, I'll, I'll go through many more coping mechanisms here of the narcissist, but um, the other interesting thing too is that the narcissist tends to um, intellectually individuate and grow very strongly and emotionally, they actually tend to be very arrested in their emotional development. And so they have, that's where it can be kind of dangerous sometimes if it's a really unhealthy narcissist, right? Is that we can have these extreme experiences of somebody being really smart and very capable of manipulating things and being very intelligent intellectually, but they really struggle with, with a lot of emotional relationships. And like, let's look at another version of this. Um, narcissists struggle to empathize. They can sometimes sympathize, but they struggle with empathy. You know who else struggles with empathy? Young children in early behavioral stages. They all have an inborn sense of empathy to a certain degree with very, very small exceptions with things like people who are born as psychopaths or things like that. But um, they really develop empathy as they individuate and go through later stages of behavioral development. But if we don't have the capacity for that because we aren't taught to empathize with others and that isn't really conditioned into us. We're not taught to see other people's viewpoints or perspectives from who they are instead of who we are. Then we can see that individual grow up and struggle with that. Another big one, um, the narcissist tends to struggle in many different ways um, with really wanting to feel a sense of power or status or specialness, right? And who else wants to feel a sense of power, status, and specialness? Well, children, right? They go through this, this really strong space of um, really seeking to feel special and unique. And again, if they had direly unmet needs of feeling that way as children because of a relationship to one of their caregivers or both of their caregivers, then they can get stuck on that, arrested in their emotional development around feeling that way. And they're constantly trying to make up for that in their adult lives. Other things we'll see. Um, impulse control issues. Narcissists can really struggle with things like um, raging with their anger, um, you know, and having a lack of emotional regulation and emotional control. Um, but even from a behavioral impulse control space, um, spending habits, a sense of recklessness, sensation seeking, um, doing whatever they want sometimes, like not really paying any heed to other people's experiences or how they might affect them. And think of like, again, childlike, right? Children learn this as they grow and evolve. But if we've got these really strong coping mechanisms, because we've got these really big needs on that in childhood, then you can see these different things stuck. Uh, we also see narcissists kind of throw these like temper tantrums as adults, right? They they have like these adult versions of temper tantrums. Um, and you see this, right? This, this at its 
core um, is related to if that's how you learn to express yourself as, as a child, then that can be that coping mechanism as an adult. If you didn't get the chance to evolve and observe and dig into it and go underneath it and heal at its root, um, even the sense of entitlement narcissists tend to have, right? You see that dynamic. Children can be a little bit entitled at times and that's innocent, right? It's at a young age, but as we evolve into adults. And then that leads to like exploiting or taking advantage of other people or circumstances, because maybe the nurse, the narcissist is very intellectually intelligent, but is stunted in their emotional understanding of how to communicate, how their actions affect other people, empathizing with other people's emotions and experiences as being different and separate from them. Like if there's a lot of these different dynamics, then you'll see these manifestations of it going forward. Sometimes you'll see narcissists tell lies excessively, right? Manipulate, gaslight, do all these different things. And it's because they haven't learned how to communicate, take accountability, responsibility for the things that they might have done wrong and learn that it's okay. I'm still acceptable and worthy of having healthy, loving relationships. Even if I made big mistakes, even if I messed up, I can still be loved. If I work through these things, if I am accountable for them, if I show up and I'm vulnerable, you know, and, and it's interesting too, because narcissists tend to have this like deep need for connection, but they are so afraid of being vulnerable at the same time. And so it creates this like sort of emotional turmoil in this middle ground that they're in that makes it very difficult for them to actually be able to relate and strengthen their relationships beyond the honeymoon stage and the infatuation stage of, of relating itself. And that leads them to really get stuck in the power struggle stage of relationships long-term. So anyways, there's many other versions of this, quite honestly, we could go on and on. Um, but if you want to do a deeper dive into understanding arrested development, because it also happens a lot in insecure attachment styles in different forms, not usually in as many forms as the narcissist struggles with, and not usually as intensely as the narcissist may struggle with their, their arrested development coping mechanisms. Um, but it's very valuable um, to understand this and to also learn how to break through these different coping mechanisms we use, because what they actually represent underneath the surface is unresolved trauma. So I hope this makes a lot of sense. If you have questions about this, please let me know in the comments below. Um, if you also have any other things you want me to share, or you have questions about like um, the narcissist specifically, arrested development specifically, what other topics, again, let me know in the comments below. I'm always excited to make future videos about your, your questions and ideas. Um, and if you enjoyed this channel, I make daily YouTube videos here all about relationships, the subconscious mind, attachment styles, um, communication, all sorts of these things and the ways that they overlap. Um, and I also run um, a program that's all ab about integrated attachment theory. Theory, which is sort of a new spin on attachment theory and how it affects our subconscious mind and core wounds and needs and boundaries. Um, and yeah, I guess that's basically it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this channel as well. I would super appreciate it. And thank you for watching and I will see you in future videos.